Committee. I'm City Councilor Marianne Labarge, Chair, and I'm joined by Ward 2 City Councilor Karen Foster, Vice Chair, Ward 1 City Councilor Michael Quinlan, and Ward 7 City Council Councilor Rachel Maori. This meeting is being held via Zoom and audio video recorded. This meeting is called to order. Roll call, Laura. <coughs> Councillor Labarge. Yes, here. Councillor Maori. Here. Um, Councillor Foster. Here. And Councillor Quinlan. Here. Okay, next on the agenda is public comment. Is there any member of the public who would like to address the committee on any subject? I don't see anybody don't present. See anything there, Laura? No, oh, no, Mayor Narkowitz is just joining though. Okay, being no members of the public present, there is no public comment. The next item on the agenda is the minutes of January 14th, 2021. Move approval. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? If not, roll call, Laura. Um, Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yep. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Okay, should we start possibly into one of the appointments anyways, Laura? It says Mayor Narkowitz is joining. So I don't know why it's not, it's taking a, a little while. <laughs> um, I guess perhaps so. Um, Where are you seeing it? I, I can see the waiting room. I, maybe nobody else can. Um, yeah, but I admitted yeah. him and it says joining, but usually it happens much faster. So I'm wondering if there's some kind of technical difficulties. Um, oh, here he is. Okay. Okay, next on our agenda. Um, is the discussion of the mayor's office appointee process. Sorry, still have my Fenway, uh, my Fenway yeah. Zoom Park back. Sorry about that. Yeah, you we guys can. hear me? Yes, yeah. we can. Sorry. Right. Um, was... We have invited our <laughs> David Narkowitz of the discussion of the mayor's appointment process. I'm going to start by turning the floor over to our mayor, David Narkowitz. Mayor, as you do know, counselors do have specific questions for you once you have finished. Thank you, Mayor, for being here. Thank you, Counselor. Sorry about that. I was uh, I was on a Zoom with a Yankee fan last week, so I had to put my uh, had to put my green monster colors up. Um, sorry about that. It's better um, than arriving with a cat filter on. That is true. That's that's <laughs> true. Slightly better. Although after the way the Red Sox played this weekend, I probably should have taken that down <laughs> earlier. Um, so, um, in terms of the appointments. Um, uh, as you know, uh, we have a um, you know we have a form and um, and a website uh, where folks can either download or they can um, fill out a form online. Um, we try to keep a running tally of what vacancies um, do exist on various um, boards and commissions, um, and we try to do outreach typically through. You know, if it's the Council on Aging, we'll, you know, put a notice in the Con Street Chronicle. Um, if we have, um, uh, you know, openings in other areas, we'll do, we'll do specific outreach targeted to, you know, constituency. We recently had a couple of vacancies, well, not vacancies, they were brand new uh, seats on the Northampton Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. Um, we actually created a flyer in both English and Spanish um, that the housing authority uh, distributed to every resident of the housing authority um, to try to generate interest in those positions. And we got, you know, so typically depending on um, what the response is, um, you know, I'll, I'll generally try to speak to every candidate who applies, um, usually a phone telephone interview um, and, um, and have a conversation with them about their interest in the position. Sometimes I'll also have the department head um, uh, that staffs the committee or, or staff member that staffs the committee 
uh, have a conversation with them as well. Like, you know, a classic example is Brian Foote for the Arts Council. Uh, we'll typically um, talk to people just to get a background, a little bit of background on their involvement in the arts. Um, sometimes, um, sometimes uh, boards, you know, will be approached directly by um, by residents who are interested in serving, and so that's another way that we sometimes find out about people. Um, so, I mean, that it's uh, you know, the, there are some specific boards like the planning board, which um, by by um, by creation have um, there's two associate positions that are, and then there's um, the remaining are are sort of full members, um, the associate. Uh, members ostensibly are there kind of like almost like alternate jurors in a jur jury trial um, to serve as backups in some permits where someone has to recuse themselves. But generally all of our members participate. Um, but typically what we've done is we start people on the planning board, for example, as an, as an associate. Um, and then if a full member, if a full position comes open, um, then we'll typically um, elevate one of the associate members and then, you know, start people as an associate, oh, you know, only because planning board is, you know, as you all know, having probably attended a hearing or two is probably, you know, short of an elected um, board can be one of the most intense of our, of our multiple member bodies with, you know, long meetings, contentious meetings, um, and, you know, a lot of land use issues often, you know, bring out lots of passionate views on either side um, from a neighborhood. So, you know, that's kind of the general process. Court, uh, court in my office um, kind of manages the whole process and has spreadsheets that keeps track of where people are and when they need to renew. You know, we sometimes have sometimes challenging just trying to get people if they want, if they're interested in serving again to get them to submit their, um, you know, submit a, a, a notice of interest. We, we did try to standardize all of the renewal dates to have them sort of fall at the end of the fiscal year um, a few years back, just so that it wasn't always this, you know, constant trying to keep track of who got appointed when. Um, so those are starting to slowly be standardized more. Um, so, you know, that's, that's generally it. We'll occasionally do some social media, um, or, um, or, you know, outreach uh, to different organizations if there's something specific that we're looking for, or we're looking, you know, um, for um, somebody, you know, from a specific, um, you know, some of our boards like the Central Business Architecture Com Committee, for example, has specific professional, um, you know, th there has to be an architect on the board. Um, and they, and so, you know, we look for recommendations from the local chapter of architects. Um, you know, the housing authority has a labor representative. And so, you know, we reach, I, I reach out to the um, Western Mass Labor Council to get recommendations from them. But, um, and then there's even a couple boards that have party affiliation, which is really strange. Um, uh, the license commission and the board of registrars has a requirement of, you know, Democrats, Republicans, and, um, and like other uh, position. Those are the two, only two that have that partisan requirement. Um, and so, you know, that often requires either reaching out, um, getting a list of registered Republicans or Democrats and, and going through the list, or sometimes reaching out to the head of those parties and asking if they have any suggestions um, for names. Um, so, um, you know, I, I, uh, I, don't, I don't know if he's the chair anymore. He, he, he was for a while, but Joseph Tarantino, um, who's um, also the president of my fan club. Um, I'm kidding. But um, it was funny when I called him up and I said, you know, I'd like to appoint, I'm, I'm looking for an appointee to the board of registrars. I'd like to appoint you. And, um, and I did end up appointing him. It was sort of, an, he's written several guest columns about me, um, but, but it was fine. I wanted somebody from the Republican party and he's the chair of the Republican party. And, you know, as far as I can tell, he's been a very active and good member of the board of registrar. So, so that's sort of it. I mean, we do, I, um, we do, I strive um, to try to promote, you know, more diversity on our boards and, 
you know, I, I feel like over the course of time um, that I have been able to put, uh, you know, more diverse people on our boards and try to look for more uh, gender balance and definitely uh, try to welcome as many folks from, um, you know, uh, different parts of the community and socioeconomic and racial. Um, and so that's something definitely that is part of my thought process when I'm looking. I mean, I know this has been a, an, a longstanding question. I mean, we ask people on the form if they will tell us, you know, if they'll identify themselves by, you know, race or Hispanic or non-Hispanic. I don't know that we can require them. It's not a requirement. Um, so we have, you know, but uh, so that is something we do ask about, but, um, but it has been something particularly, you know, boards like the, um, you know, like the housing partnership, um, the human rights commission, especially we had kind of a wholesale kind of turnover on the human rights commission a few years ago. And, um, you know, again, some of them were not, um, members of my fan club necessarily they, we just had disagreements about what their role was. And so as it turned out, um, it actually led to a whole bunch of new folks being appointed and we were actually able to get a lot more um, diversity. Uh, it was a fairly um, homogenous board um, for a human rights commission. Um, and so, you know, we've, we've tried to, we, we made some, some changes there. So that's kind of, you know, every, all of there's such, there's such different boards, you know, like the, you know, things that have some areas of of really special interest or expertise like the arts or the tree, um, you know, the urban forestry commission, um, you know, there's one where we often get, you know, one great source of appointees has been from tree Northampton, which is like the citizen volunteer group. So that has been a, has been a feeder for, um, uh, the, the first the public shade tree commission and now the urban forestry commission. Um, where, you know, we've had people that have been really active tree planting volunteers who just got really involved. And so um, when we've had openings, those have often been, um, you know, great new members of the commission. And the same with arts. We have a lot of people that volunteer at events or they're, you know, perennial volunteers at Transperformance or maybe they're an artist themselves or, and so um, Brian's always looking um, for folks like that who've shown, you know, a real interest in the work of the of the arts council, and we've tried to promote them. So that's kind of it. I mean, there, um, you know, we, obviously we often, you know, we're we're always um, looking for suggestions and always encouraging people, even if there is an opening, to fill out a form. And you know, often people will check multiple boxes. Um, we will acknowledge those forms and we will keep them on file and tell them that if an opening occurs, then we can go through and see. You know, was there anybody who submitted a form and they were interested in the planning board, for example? Um, so that's kind of the way um, we've done it. And um, yeah, that's that's it. So um, I know we have, have some openings now on a few boards. Um, and, uh, and, you know, again, those are uh, ones that we'll, you know, try to work to fill um, over time. We actually just had somebody step down from the housing authority. Um, so um, we're trying to get the word out on that as well. So that's it. That's what that's my sort of brief presentation, and then I can answer questions. Okay, counselors, Councillor Foster, do you would you like to go ahead and bring forth your questions to the mayor? Sure, happy to. Mayor, thanks so much for coming today. It was really. Um, helpful just to sort of hear from you. I know the process is on the website, but it's it's really helpful to me to, to have a discussion. I appreciate it. And I have in this last year, you know, doing this work, um, talked with a pretty diverse pool of people who are joining boards and commissions. And that's been really exciting. We've sort of all commented on that as we're looking at appointments. We've seen renters on the housing partnership and, um, you know, people who are younger, people of color, um, you know, on a variety of, of, of um, boards. And that's been, that's been really great to see. Um, I, I have a couple of questions that I'm not gonna dominate, but one I wanted to ask you, um, I was thinking about from our discussion way back about um, the urban forestry, um, when we were talking in council about reconfiguring that so that the tree warden is the, the chair of that there was a, a sort of discussion around it that I, I was just sort of interested in asking you to expand on. And I'm sorry, I didn't think earlier to give you a heads up. Um, 
but um, Councillor Mayori had asked a question pertaining to um, the sort of role of boards and commissions in the city um, and um, you know, sort of thinking about it as a, a growth and leadership opportunity for people who are joining. Um, and I know also then of course the boards and commissions are, are doing the work that they're set up to. But I was just curious kind of how you see that citizen or resident actually engagement kind of coming through boards and commissions and what role they have to play there. Um, I, I definitely see that. I mean, that was my path for getting involved in, in um, you know, in, in eventually in elected city government. I started out serving on a couple of different boards. Um, and that's, so that's, can also be, obviously it's not anything explicit or anything written down, but certainly, um, you know, it's not uncommon um, that people, you know, that sometimes can be their first um, entree into being involved in, in municipal government. I know, you know, Michael served on, on the trust fund committee um, before running and, you know, Claire Higgins was a, a her first involvement was um, serving on the Northampton Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. That's sort of how she got started um, and then, you know, got involved in other ways. So it's certainly been a path for some, it's not always the path, um, but, you know, that is an important way for people to, um, you know, to, to at least, you know, be involved in, um, in some cases, decision making on boards like the planning board or, or, you know, boards that actually have some independent authority, um, but certainly just understanding how, you know, municipal government works, how the open meeting law works, how, you know, public records and all those things. I mean, I know that was a big learning curve for the NPRC recently, um, because we were sort of by definition in many ways appointing people, I think with only one exception, you know, pointing people that weren't, you know, that, well, you know, obviously two exceptions were elected officials. We had one person from the Board of Health um, and then we had one person from the Human Rights Commission, but I know a lot of other folks, um, this was one of the first times they'd served on a, on a board or commission. So that did create its own issues, but I definitely see that, you know, as a way to get people um, you know, more involved. And I think I talked about this maybe with this council, I'm not sure, but, you know, we did, you know, we did do, um, you know, we've done some grant related work um, around sort of re, you know, engaging people in, in um, our planning processes, particularly planning processes where we've gotten grants and we've hired outreach folks to go out and, and uh, try to, you know, uh, engage people more. We've, we have um, done child, some child care for certain meetings to try to get, um, you know, uh, people um, being, being more able to attend. Um, and so, um, and those have often um, sometimes, you know, borne out people who've, you know, maybe come to a planning process for the first time. And, and then some of those folks ended up applying for boards or we encouraged them to apply. So I do think, I mean, I, I, I do think it's important. Um, and I do think it's one of the ways that you can, you know, cultivate people's interest in getting, you know, maybe eventually running for office or serving in office. So, yeah, um, you know, the, the I, know, I don't know if this is specifically about whether um, the chair of the commission is a volunteer or not. I don't know. I mean, the chairs generally are, you know, on most of these boards and commissions are, are parliamentarians who run the meeting. So um, I don't know that that's necessarily important or not important, but it, um, so yeah, that, that would be my take on it. Thanks. Yeah, no, I, um, that, that was it. Like for a lot of people, right? It is their first foray into learning how municipal government works and seeing kind of how, how the ship has sailed and, you know, Robert's rules and open meeting law and all of those, all of those things. Um, I have some follow-up questions, but go ahead, um, others. I, I will happily formulate thoughts for a minute anyway. Councillor Quinlan. Uh, thank you, Councillor Barge, and thank you, Mayor Narquist, for being here. Uh, really, really glad to, to have a chance to catch up with you in city services uh, and, and appreciate your time, of course. Um, so I had... Um, you know, what, as, as part of city services, uh, a lot of times... I think, well, probably about 50% of the people that I've spoken with about, you know, being appointed uh, were reappointments. 
Uh, and so I've asked them, you know, what, what's something that they liked and what's something that they didn't like. Uh, and then, so I've kind of wondered what was the, what is the sort of follow-up process for your, for you and your office with that, especially not necessarily if someone's, you know, being reappointed, if they want to stay on the board of commission, it would seem to me that it's been a pretty good experience for them. Although sometimes they do have things that they'd love to, to try or whatever, but they're, they're part of it. So they should make that go. But when someone chooses to no longer participate, uh, do you have an exit interview process or anything like that to follow up with them just to see if the experience could be improved at all? That was one thing that was on my, on my mind. Yeah, I mean, when generally when someone is going to be reappointed, um, you know, there's um, often will or is up for reappointment. We'll generally um, check in with the staff and and just check in on like, have what's their attendance been like? Have they been, you know, have they been a good, uh, you know, meeting you know, for attendance wise? Um, and then often there'll be a communication with that person about, you know. There, if do they want to? Do they want to continue for an additional term? Um, often, I'm trying to think of examples where, I mean, recent examples. I mean, I, I recently did do a sort of an exit interview with someone that that um, that was uh, announcing that they you know um, couldn't serve anymore, and um, and it was just really it was just they were changing jobs and they just didn't have the time anymore. It was actually the person that was you know on the on the Northampton Housing Authority, but definitely there's communication around, you know, the reasons for why either people don't want to be reappointed or, um, or they, or the reasons um, why, in some cases, why I'm not reappointing them. It's rare, rarely happens, you know, generally it hasn't been an issue, but we, there have been occasions where we've had people who just, you know, missed half the meetings, you know, weren't at the meetings or couldn't make the meetings and just that it wasn't fair to the other members and it wasn't fair for them to, to take up a seat. So we do try to, um, you know, and, and there's actually been a few cases where we've, um, I've reached out to people to see if they would be interested in serving on a different board, you know, somebody who'd been on one board. And um, this sometimes happens with planning board um, because planning board is one of the more challenging boards, you know, that I think it's hard to put somebody on who's never had any experience serving on a board um, to then be on, a, on the planning board of sort of like the, the mother of all boards in terms of like intensity and the issues. And suddenly you've got lawyers and developers and people, architects standing in front of you and a packed house. Um, so there have also been cases where I've asked people, you know, that's been really good on the, you know, whatever the the zoning board, you know, would you be interested in in moving up to the, um, up to the planning board? I've never been able to. I've actually had that conversation several times with David Bloomberg, but I can never convince him to do it, um, even though he could probably serve on all three boards. You know, he's a he's a um, an attorney in town who actually does a lot of work, um, does most of the work for all the affordable housing, you know, Valley CDC. And, and um, so he's really well-versed in these things. And he's been on the zoning board for a long time, um, but he just kind of likes the zoning board and doesn't want to do other boards. But so in some cases we've been able to, you know, if there, if there's been an opening, we've convinced people to like step off of one board and maybe step on to another one with a little bit more responsibility. So it's kind of all over the map, but definitely um, in those cases where people say, you know, that's it, I'm done, uh, we'll definitely, you know, reach out to them to try to understand the reasons why. Um, I mean, I do, it is a challenge. I do think sometimes, you know, it's sort of a balancing act because we do have people that have been on boards for quite a long time. Um, we don't have term limits per se. Um, and it is, it's really a tough because you, you know, you obviously want to have turnover and most all of our boards do have turnover. Um, but there's also something to be said for, for having some continuity and having some institutional knowledge. So it's a, it's a real, um, it's a real balancing act. Um, uh, but I, I'm, I'm, you know, I've never, um, just said, I'm, I'm kicking you off just cause you've been on too long. Um, uh, but it's, you know, it, it is, it is definitely one of those things that, um, that you're, you're always trying to weigh because you would certainly wouldn't want the same, you know, eight or nine members of the planning board for, you know, forever. Um, 
Although that's generally doesn't happen because people are, you know, generally always turning over um, for one reason or another, professional or life or or what or moving out of town, those kinds of things. Um, so I guess that's my my best answer in terms of exit interviews or just checking in with people um, if they're going to be reappointed or not be reappointed. That's great. Thank you. I, actually, I, my only other question was uh, how often or what would the circumstances be where you might not reappoint someone, but you answered that in there too. So thanks very much. And again, thanks for being here. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, and, and there've also been cases where people have, you know, there've been some cases where people, I don't know, it just didn't feel like a good fit for them uh, for whatever reason. And the staff reported back that it wasn't a good fit. And so, you know, but generally it's been mostly things like attendance, um, or, or yeah, those kinds of things would be the reason that somebody, you know, would be asked not to serve again. You know, a couple of cases, at least one case during my time, we had an associate member who was an associate member for quite a while. Um, and just, um, I don't know, was, uh, it just didn't seem like it was working out and the person just, uh, and so we never, we ended up rather than like, keeping him as, as an associate forever because I wasn't really feeling comfortable that they would make a good full member. We just said, we're just not going to reappoint you as an associate, um, which is hard, but, um, but it felt like the right decision. Um, you know, because part of being on a board is, you know, you can have your own opinions. It's important that people be independent, but at the end of the day, you know, like the planning board, you still also have to follow the law and you have to follow the zoning and you have to be, you know, um, and so some people, um, on, on a board like that, where there's legal implications and, and you know, you, you're supposed to follow the law, it is important to find people that, you know, can sort of um, adapt to that and, and, you know, have their have opinions, which is important. Um, but at the same time, you know, understand that there are certain things that are we just we have to follow certain aspects of the law. So, so, um, so yeah, that's the only time I can think of where, um, where just somebody was not a good fit. Mayor, um, say for an example, the planning board, you would be looking at least somebody who's a lawyer to be on planning board, also on zoning also? Um, you know, I try, I mean, I would say um, with the planning board, for example, um, you know, we often get lots of people that are lawyers, we get people, we, it's, we get lots of engineers that apply, um, like people that work for, you know, like tie and bond or work for local engineering firms. Um, I've always felt that it's okay to have some folks like, I mean, to have the, the, some of that expertise on, on the board. And, um, but I've also always felt that it's good to just have like, you know, lay people on the board as well. So that you have a divert, you know, so that it's just not a bunch of planners talking to each other, um, talking to staff who are planners, um, you know. So just having some people that are just, um, you know, uh, you know, maybe they're maybe they have an interest in 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 building, or or maybe you know, I'm not sure, uh, or they're just really interested in 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 planning and land use, but maybe it's not their full time profession. Um, you know, I think about somebody like George Cohab who's not a planner, not a lawyer. Um, I think he's an electrician um, by trade. Um, so, you know, he's knows his way around a blueprint, but but he's been more interested in community building and he's been involved in Lead Civic and and he's been involved in other organizations and just he just um, uh, and also just has a good way around about about, you know, uh, knowing how to work in a board setting and things like that. So um, but you know, so it's I don't think it's a I don't think there's any kind of professional requirement. It is nice to have a few people that have some, you know, that, you know, maybe having an attorney. Um, sometimes it's good to, to have some people with some planning experience. Um, um, but it's, I wouldn't say that it's a requirement. And I definitely don't want to have everybody, you know, all, you know, in, in that field of work. Um, another good example on the planning board, which is actually similar to what I just described to Councillor Quinlan, um, Krista Granat, who works at, um, I, why do I want to keep calling it Rug Lumber, uh, um, the Lumber Yard in Hatfield, I can't think of their name, um, it's where Rug Lumber, across the street from where, anyway, she, she's a building, she sells building materials and building equipment and, um, and 
windows and things like that. And anyway, she was on the Transportation and Parking Commission for many years and enjoyed it. But when the when a planning board opening came up, you know, she was somebody that um, was interested in being on the planning board. And again, she had a good track record on the TPC. And um, but again, she's not a lawyer. She's not a planning expert, but she's just a, a engaged citizen who's uh, pretty smart and, and level-headed and seems like the planning board has been a good fit for her. So, um, so yeah, I try to do that as well. I also, you know, I also have tried to have developers, you know, people that bring that perspective. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I got a little, little bit of a fuss when I put Alan Verson on the planning board and people were very, had a very strong reaction to that. Um, and, you know, I, you know, Al, I've known Alan for a long time. I wouldn't say that we're, um, you know, have similar political philosophies, but, but, you know, if you're making land use policies about, you know, the, the, around development, you know, having somebody who's been an experienced developer and a landlord and, you know, I thought was a valuable thing to have on the planning board. So again, I wouldn't want to have it be, you know, nine developers or landlords, but I thought it was a, a unique perspective. He also was an attorney. So that was unique. Um, so I guess it's always like trying to strike the, a, a, the right balance of people um, and just not have it be too tilted too far in one direction or the other. So that's what I've always strived to do when I look at certain appointments, in addition to all the other things like, you know, uh, gender, you know, balance and diversity, um, you know, things like the CONSCOM, you know, though there's, we often get people that are wetlands experts or people that are, you know, in, involved in environmental issues. And again, that's great to have. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly we do appoint a few of those folks on there, um, but we also just want to have regular, you know, citizens um, that, um, that just express an interest and can learn, you know, learn the material and learn the laws and, and, um, and be able to function well in a board. Thank you, Mayor. Councillor Rachel Mayor. I have a couple of questions, so maybe I'll do one and, uh, and then maybe Councillor Foster can get hers in. Um, I appreciate you explaining the balance. I was wondering about that in terms of like, how do you even determine conflict of interest? But what I'm hearing is, is it's really more like looking at the entire border commission and trying to achieve a balance because I, I've been asked that question, you know, we have some real estate people on the board, board of assessors and uh, and the planning board, as you said. Um, so that's helpful. Um, I guess I was, um, sometimes I get inquiries from residents saying, I really want to serve, but I'm not sure what the, is the right fit is. And I, is, there, is would Court Klein be a good person for them to talk to directly? Because I think it'd be more useful if they talked to someone who A, was really up to date with openings and kind of knew more about the kind of the, the way the boards and commissions played out. I don't want to give Court too much work, but a couple of times, I wanted to give residents a contact to find the right fit. Yeah, I mean, what we typically do, you know, if somebody, I mean, it could, certainly court could try to play that role, but I mean, you know, if there's somebody, somebody who wants to be on, you know, the Conservation Commission or the Historical Commission, you know, talking to Sarah LaValle, I mean, you know, or, right. or I often will ask, one of the questions I'll ask people is, have you ever attended one of these meetings? Like, have you gone, have you, you know, you want to be on this board, have you ever gone to a meeting or watched the meeting, you know? Um, and, um, but oftentimes, you know, I'll send, I'll put them in touch with like a Sarah or a Carolyn or, or, you know, Keith, if it's the housing partnership, um, just to like have them have a conversation just so they'll make sure that they have a good understanding of what they're walking into because you know a lot of people maybe don't even understand you know like I, I love the environment I you know I give to Massburg and Sierra Club I want to be on the conservation commission I'm a conservationist uh, little do they know they're going to be like studying you know arcane wetlands delineation plans and interpreting a really narrow chapter of, you know, mass general law and our ordinances and, you know, is the disturbance too close or too far away? I mean, it's a, some of these boards are highly technical, um, even though they sound in, in concept, you know, like they might be a little more broad. So definitely talking to my office about them and or, you know, having them reach out to the staff person and say, you know, I'm just trying to learn more about the historical commission and, um, you know, I'm maybe interested in applying and want to learn more about it. So 
yeah, certainly referring them to my office or referring them, you know, to the staff person that staffs the boards would be another way to do it. Right. Um, I'm also thinking that, you know, I don't know if it's possible, but um, a, a bunch of us counselors have newsletters. And if I'm, you know, if, if I kind of, if, if court or that's the right person had just a little list of openings that, you know, that I could just quickly transfer into the newsletter because I'm, I'm not going to take the time to frankly go through it and do it myself. But if, if that was available, we could kind of promote, I'm trying to think of ways to promote openings more um, to the community. So if, if there's just a periodic um, kind of uh, email blurb from someone from your office saying some openings, um, that would make it easier for us to promote those. Um, and I guess I'm wondering, um, oh yeah, I was just wondering, are there any boards or commissions that you just have trouble keeping filled? I don't know, I don't know, uh, or has high, have high turnover? Well, it's um, on a trampoline. There's no way to be quiet. <laughs> okay, no. Um, and I'm just, I'm not sure. Oh, I can't, I can't, she, I can't screen share. Um, but if I could, or maybe you could, Laura, there, on the boards and commissions page, we do have a tally of what, where there are vacancies. So you sure. can always, oh. we try to update it every, so every, every once in a while, but um I'm giving you permission too, in case you have it more readily available. But I, I have it on my screen, right but I, I can just share it. I mean, so we do have on the board itself. Oh, um, so right here is the boards and committees page. And yeah. So, and there's a list of current vacancies. Oh yeah. Um, oh, that's great. So, I mean, and then we Some try, to, we try to keep it up. I will say that we probably have a few more vacancies now than normal, because in some cases, just because of the pandemic, people, the board, some of the boards haven't been as active. Um, and, um, and so, you know, I, Council on Aging is one where we have a bunch of vacancies that we're trying to fill. And, you know, again, it's been a, it's been a challenging time for seniors in general. Um, and so that's one that we're, and, and some of these are just because of reappoint, you know, people haven't been reappointed yet, or they haven't decided whether they're, they're going to reappoint. But, um, so yeah, so here's a list and you can kind of see them. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that there's, I mean, some of them like um, Council on Aging and the um, Arts uh, Council are both really big boards. Um, they're super big um, by sort of by state definition. And so those, it's funny, are not, are, they're not always fully staffed. Um, I mean, for whatever reason, and some of it's just turnover, some of it is, um, you know, on the arts council side, there's actually an arts council board, which is the, you know, the governmental arts council board. And then they also have a board that's called Northampton Arts Inc., which is the nonprofit um, that raises money separately. And because they give out like two grant rounds, one of them is the government grant rounds and one of them. So sometimes they move, they lose people that go over to the Inc. board. And, and so, so I, yeah, it's, it's, um, I'm trying to think, I mean, Human Rights Commission, we've had periods where there've been turnover. Um, and sometimes it's because, you know, somebody's a grad student and they, you know, finish and move somewhere else. We've had, we've had five college professors that have been on the Human Rights Commission who then get busy and move on. Um, so I can't think of, I can't think of any one particular one that's had a lot of volatility. I would just say that some of the larger ones um, where there's often openings and, and largely because, you know, if, if, a, if a board is like 24 members, it's not critical if all 24 seats are filled or not. And actually Brian Foote is happy if he doesn't have 24 people at a board meeting. So um, I so see no season. I know we had an opening. Well, this is an interesting question. Like or maybe there's not an opening. Someone just left Nesk, for example, but perhaps you have someone else in the wings. Is, is that how it might work? Yeah, not really. I mean, that's uh, that one is interesting because I don't see that one on here, but that is definitely true. Oh. That Nesk should be on here because Aiden's like a like yeah, a Aiden charter really member of the commission. Uh, he's I been know. on there. Uh, but I'm thinking if maybe you, okay, because it yeah. could be that it could be that you 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 had someone say a year ago no. interested, so you held a, okay. 
I mean, we, we might. We it's quite possible that we do, and, yeah. and we possibly do. I mean, the uh, and NESC is one that there's all these different slotted members that come from different, you know, either the council or you know different slots. Right. So there's actually like TPC. There's actually a small number of just straight citizen, you know, appointees. So and Aiden actually had one of those, one of those slots. So. Um, yeah, I guess I know he just emailed us about that because he bought a house yeah. somewhere out of town. In Williamsburg, at the yeah, yeah, exactly. So I know that mm -hmm. um, I think we got the email about it. So I think it just hasn't been added to this list. But I suspect we'll go back and look and see if there's people that have applied and had been interested and we'll start with them. But, but we should definitely spread the word uh, to people about it. Well, thank you. Um, I, I'll let Karen, um, Councillor Foster a, a, ask the next question, but then I have one more after that. And I just want to say it, it was it was really great that you do interview each um, applicant, because I remember as someone who applied for the Human Rights Commission, it really brought some gravity to it. Like, I, I feel like it really centered me in my role. And I realized how that the city takes their boards and commission seriously because the mayor is calling me to talk to me about it. So I think that's a really good, uh, good practice. Thank you. Thanks. I mean, I, I feel like if this person, if I'm putting this person forward as my appointee, that I should, you know, have a conversation with them, get to understand why they want to be on it. And, um, you know, and I've actually, you know, I, I've, I've had plenty of these conversations where I've, you know, it just, I, it hasn't been, a, I'm glad I had the conversation because it might have been a train wreck if they'd been put on the board, mm -hmm. sort of sight unseen. Um, and, you know, I had, one person say to me, like, you know, I want to go on, I mean, I want to go on the planning board because a project just got approved in my neighborhood that I hated. I was against it. And I want to go on there and, and uh, fight against every project in the future. Um, and I'm thinking about running for council and mayor too, or something, you know, anyway, I just thought like, no, that's not the reason to be on the planning board. Like that's not like, no. So, um, so yeah. So I think it's important that I talk to everybody and have a conversation and, and, and again, part of it's that balance too that I'm always trying to looking for, uh, just seeing if, you know how, if this person brings would help bring sort of that balance to a, a commission as well. So, Karen, Councillor Foster, thanks. Um, so one quick question, and then I'll have a, a, a somewhat more involved follow up. But a quick question: you mentioned. Um, with COVID and the Council on Aging, but I was wondering if boards like the planning board, some of the boards that have actually been incredibly active, if you're seeing any um, difference in engagement or if maybe there are people who are staying that may not have been able to stay if it were in person or if you're, if you're picking up any shifts there in, in who's serving or staying or leaving based on how the meetings are being held. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think... Um... I guess I'd have to follow up with some of our staff on that. I mean, I, I haven't, um, I haven't had a, I don't I guess I don't have a good sense of that at this point. Um, you know, I, obviously the planning boards had plenty of, um, you know, meetings all throughout the pandemic. Um, a lot of our committees have continued to meet, although, you know, you know, like the, like the arts council is a good example. I mean, they've, they've, they've gone through and given out the grants and gone through grant evaluations and, you know, those things have continued. Um, but I don't have a good sense of it in, in terms of, um, but that's certainly something that we can check with our staff on and check with the boards themselves on, I, you know, cause I know, you know, I know we certainly have heard from some members of the public that having this ability to, to be able to, you know, come telephonically has been helpful. Um, so it could possibly help someone who uh, maybe couldn't serve on a board. I, I, you know, we'll have to see what the, how the logistics of that work out with the open meeting law and what they ultimately decide post pandemic. Um, so I don't have a clear answer, but it's certainly, um, I mean, I haven't had anybody that, that I'm aware of that has resigned because they couldn't deal with, you know, Zoom, the Zoom format. Um, uh, and so, but, and I, and I conversely don't have any specific anecdotal story of somebody who said, you know, I was going to quit, but now that I can do it by zoom, I, I, I won't. So, but it, it possibly may, may, um, 
may have benefited some folks um, transportation wise or just getting from work to a meeting, you know, at five o'clock or something, it may have benefited them. So it's, I guess it's sort of an open question. Sure. And then I guess my last question is, I'm mindful of the sort of roles where people are applying to the mayor's office and you're interviewing and making appointments and, and our role as a council is to, um, you know, forward those appointments or approve those appointments. But I'm wondering if there's ways that our committee and the mayor's office, if you see ways that we could work um, together, both on as Councilor Mayori brought up sort of advertising openings, but then also things like, um, you know, I, I know some communities say have a handbook for a new commissioner, you know, to kind of demystify some of the open meeting law and Robert's rules. Um, or there's another community that has, I think it's Melrose, um, twice a year they have like a, Mel a welcome to Melrose event where people come and they meet, um, you know, the various department heads, the head of DPW, and they meet maybe court from your office to talk about opportunities to serve. And maybe they meet, um, uh, you know, the parks and rec, you know, kind of like a welcome, welcoming new community members. And that's much larger than just this one piece, but it kind of got me thinking on some of those personal touches. And so I was just wondering kind of your thoughts on if there's, um, I, I, I know it's, it's, it's a big lift. And so I just didn't know if you had anything in mind as well that you see that the council could support your work. Yeah, I mean, um, there have been various um, uh, attempts at those kinds of things over time. Um, uh, there have been some times where we've, um, you know, at the beginning of a, a term where we've in, you know, invite, invited all board members from all boards to come to a meeting, you know, to get a, a briefing or a refresher course on open meeting or those kinds of things. Um, uh, Mayor Higgins, uh, for a time, uh, developed a program called City School, um, which was sort of a, um, which was sort of a multi-day um, seminar um, about 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 the city and city government um and um kind of sort of like if you know like they have the citizens police academy which is sort of like an introduction to the police department it's sort of like that except on a lot of different levels um so um so there's definitely been those kinds of ideas that and different communities have done have tried uh, you know different things and um a lot of it is i think you know like you said just sort of having the bandwidth and the ability to do it and to, you know, devote a staff person to doing it and um, carving out the time. I know the city school thing um, became, was quite uh, a lot of work for one particular staff person and, and that person left. And so the program never continued. Um, I mean, it stopped before I became mayor, but, um, but so there's certainly things like that that are out there that can be explored. Um, in terms of a, a guidebook, um, I mean, I suppose there's, um, we could do that. It's, it's hard, to, every, a lot of boards are so different from each other. Like there's not, I mean, there's certainly a lot of similarities about every board and, and you know, open meeting law and public records law and ethics laws are certainly the things that tie them together. Um, but it would, I, it would, I'm trying to think of a way you, you could uh, create an all-encompassing handbook that would, you know, address, you know, special permit hearings and shade tree hearings and just, uh, gr you know, the grant process that the Arts Council um, does. And so that would, it would get to be a little more um, specific. So maybe it's better to have each, each board have their own orientation, you know, guide or manual that's more specific to them, um, something like that. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, um, I guess something for me to ponder and think about in terms of working with the committee. I mean, clearly the committee and the, and all the counselors, you know, using you as, as sort of recruiters for people, I think is important, you know, cause you obviously have listservs and you have, um, you know, in, in non in pre COVID times, you know, have neighborhood meetings possibly. And so, you know, being able to try to recruit people for openings on city boards um, or there maybe there's somebody that you think you know has been really active, um, you know, in your particular ward that would be great to 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 formalize that and be on a board. So I think the, the ways being in 
in touch about those and, you know, maybe just maybe quarterly, you know, looking at the vacancies um, on the website and, you know, maybe one of you reporting at the city council that there's X number of vacancies on, you know, in these boards and that councilors should encourage their residents to apply, something like that. I don't know. Um, so those are just my thoughts. I don't, I don't have anything concrete at this point, um, but, but certainly the, the sort of citizen or resident orientation um, is, is definitely a thing and different communities try different things over time. Um, I think at one point, I know before, it was before the pandemic, I know, um, I think Northampton Open Media was, was attempting to try to create some like little, little sort of tutorial videos on things like that. Um, because a lot of this stuff you could, you know, you can learn about um, without necessarily going and sitting through a all day class on a Saturday. So that might be another tool um, that, that, you know, using Northampton Open Media to create some, some citizen guide videos of sorts about, you know, these are the different boards and committees. This is how you get on a committee, you know, those kinds of things. That might be another, just knowing that people get, get a lot of their information um, visually or through, you know, media, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, those kinds of things. Councillor Muir, and that will be the last question. Okay. Um, yeah, that uh, Councillor Foster really got my, you know, imagination going, thinking about like, you know, the future when we have, you know, city wide events, having a table uh, that explains some of the boards and committees or uh, does a little outreach there. I think that would be fantastic, something like that. So I just, I have two more questions. Uh, one is, um, I'm curious how it's decided when you put counselors on boards and commissions and when they're not, it just, just curiosity there. And then I assume um, the mayor's office can add or, or modify boards and committees as needed. Uh, because I'm just thinking particularly about um, the and, uh, MPRC and I feel like there's gonna be an ongoing need for conversation and check in with the community around public safety and policing. I don't know if that's really a subcommittee really of city services, but some sort of public safety committee or commission um, that, that has residents on it. That's just, so I guess my question is, you know, are you, I assume you can, uh, can add and expand and modify committees and, and the role of counselors on those uh, committees and, and, and commissions in general. So um, as a general rule, I, I'm, well, except in specific cases where we've sort of created commissions to be a blend of city staff and city councilors and residents. Um, I'm not a fan of putting city councilors on resident on city committees, just because I feel like, and actually Councilor Labarge will remember this as a, as a sort of first term um, counselor. I actually um, sponsored an ordinance um, that basically said, if you're a city councilor, you can't serve on a board or commission um, I thought it was sort of common sense, but like we had like four counselors, like we, we had two counselors that were on the Board of Public Works. We had a counselor, actually Councilor Murphy, who was on the Central Business Architecture Committee. And I forgot there was one other, um, but basically that resulted in sort of kicking them off those boards and committees. Because I feel like, you know, these are boards and committees that are for city residents um, and they're appointed boards and that if you're running for office, um, you know, then you, you know, you're, you're sort of chosen to run for this other, you know, city board, which is, you know, the school committee or city council. And it just feels like I, I don't understand why you would have, um, why you would want to have a counselor serving as a, you know, in a you know, resident role on one of these advisory boards or, or other boards. I mean, there's also practical reasons, obviously, you can imagine if you had a counselor on the planning board, that could create some serious um, conflicts, you know, in terms of your, your one night you're debating, you know, the, the ordinances around zoning and the next night you're in trying to interpret them. And, um, and oh, by the way, you're also collecting a small salary. So you have a, you know, someone could say you have a conflict. You know, so anyway, I, I've not been a fan of that, um, but I do, I have been a fan 
where we've put together commissions like the transportation and parking or the energy and commerce, uh, energy and commerce, energy and sustainability, um, where, where you know, you're trying to get this multidisciplinary body that is a mixture of uh, both, um, you know, uh, residents, practitioners, or, you know, subject matter experts for the city and policymakers, i.e., you know, counselors. So in those cases, I think it's been appropriate and, and it seems like it's worked out. Um, but I haven't been a fan of just like, you know, I know several of you were on boards and commissions and I sort of said, I just didn't think it made sense for you all to continue serving because it's like, why wouldn't we want to give another resident an opportunity? And I also think that having, um, you know, um, it's hard to, when you're a counselor, I think people think of you differently and look at you differently and have a different expectation, I don't know, for whatever reason. So I also think it it distorts the board as well. So um, so I'm not, a, I've never been a fan of that. And it's, and it's, um, and so that's always been the way I've approached it. Um, but obviously we've created commissions, including the N N R N N R P C or NPRC, which, you know, also had counselors on it as well as, you know, uh, residents on it. So I, I think there's definitely a place for it in terms of expanding committees or adding committees. I mean, that would be something that, um, I can do, but only by an administrative order that I submit to the council. Oh. Um, and um, I, so I have to submit an administrative order to either create a new committee or modify an existing committee. And then you have to hold a public hearing on it and then you vote up or down on it. Um, and that's prescribed by yeah. charter. So, um, I, you know, other than maybe I can remove people from committees for cause, like if they don't show up to meetings or things like that, but otherwise I can't really mess with the structure of committees or, or change the membership of committees or create new committees without going through the process of the charter, uh, which is the whole administrative order process. Okay, thank you so much. Anybody else have any more questions before we continue on with our agenda? That's it. Thank you, Mayor, very, very Mayor. much for coming. Oh, thank you so much for having thank me. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank okay, you. Have a good rest of your meeting. Okay, you too. Bye. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Okay. Okay, items referred to committee on March 4th, 2021. And we have David Whitehill, full member, 60 Washington Avenue, Northampton, term March 2021 through June 2022, to fill the term of resigned full member, Alan Verson. Councillor Foster, can you give us your report on your conversation with the applicant, David Whitehill? Sure, yeah, I spoke with David the other day. Um, we had a really nice conversation. He's um, serving as an associate member of the planning board now. Um, and so this would be um, an appointment um, to the full member position. Um, you know, it, and it was interesting because I talked to him knowing that there have been, you know, the zoning changes in several, um, slightly controversial issues that have come before planning board just as the mayor talked about and I asked David kind of what his experience there was or how that went for him and he said well you know actually our work is relatively um, straightforward that we're we're you know, looking at plans and applying and so that the actual work is relatively straightforward and he mentioned something that another member I had interviewed months ago said as well that sometimes it can be challenging that they really want to hear from the public and public comment as uh, sometimes people want them to have authority or power that they don't necessarily have. Um, and the only thing otherwise, he said he felt like, um, you know, he is having a really good experience. Um, you know, it feels like people engage with the planning board, but also recognizes um, probably like all things that there's a need for more communication um, around kind of what's happening with the planning board to help residents be able to engage and that that's, you know, communication I think these days is taking so many different channels, um, but he could really see a need for more and stronger communication um, around issues that are coming before the planning department uh, so that people know, or the planning board, I mean. 
Um, but otherwise he is an architect. Um, you know, he's got a lot of experience, relevant experience. Um, and he, he lives um, in Northampton with his family. Um, and I would recommend him. I move to appoint or um, recommend his appointment. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to forward the appointment of David Whitehill to the planning board with a positive recommend recommendation to full city council. Is there any discussion? Roll call, Laura. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Next, we have a refer to the committee on 318 2021 to the planning board. Samuel Taylor, full member, 245 North Street, Northampton, term July 2020 through June 2023, reappointment. And Council Quinlan, can you give us your report on your conversation with the applicant, Samuel Taylor? I can. Thank you very much, Council Labarge. Uh, Sam Taylor is a, a contractor and a property owner here in Northampton. Uh, and I feel like everything else I have to say is kind of similar to what Councillor Foster just mentioned, but also some things that the mayor mentioned too. Uh, Sam became aware and involved in the planning board when he attended a meeting to oppose, oppose a building that was uh, going near his home. Uh, he uh, found the, the entire process kind of interesting and then decided to apply. Uh, and now is, has been a member for a couple of years. Um, I, you know, I asked him about what his positives are, what, what goes well. And, you know, uh, similar to what, what, uh, what Councillor Foster just mentioned, he feels proud of the way the planning board acts. You know, they, he feels that they do stay within the framework of the law, kind of uh, those as the guy, you know, their guidance at all times is, the, is what, what the, the zoning ordinances and, and, and laws allow. So uh, he thought that was, you know, a point of pride. Um, and when I asked him what he thought is something that could be improved, he mentioned one thing that they've just, just done uh, in the last couple of years, uh, which is they've begun requiring artwork uh, to be submitted with plans that kind of depicts the plans uh, in relation to the streetscape. Uh, I mentioned when we had Carolyn Mission Full Council, a project that went on right across the street from my house where there was one home and it became eight condos. Uh, and Sam kind of chuckled about that because he said, you know, those are much larger than the, than the homes in, on your street. Uh, and he kind of remembered that specifically, and they are quite a bit larger because uh, they're duplexes and so forth, uh, but they're taller than the rest of our homes. Um, and he said, now, I don't think that that would have gone the same exact way because we would have required an understanding, a streetscape understanding of, of how the street would look with these new houses. So I thought that was interesting. And he felt really good about that. That was, um, again, I think you know, his point about kind of following the law and the rules was very important. So in terms of improving something, he didn't feel like there was something that could be tremendously improved because he doesn't see them having a lot of purview outside of following the, this set of rules. So I thought that was neat, the, the, uh, the, the artwork uh, bit of it. Uh, so we had a good talk and, and uh, Sam is, is on the planning board, in my opinion, for the right reasons. And so I move a positive recommendation to full city council for Sam Taylor. Okay. We have a second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to forward the appointment of Samuel Taylor to the planning board with a positive recommendation to full city council. Is there any discussion? Roll call, Laura. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Motion is unanimous. Now, new business. I wanted to let you know that on May 3rd, 2021, we will be interviewing for an appointment of Charlene Nardine to the position of finance director for the city of Northampton, which will take effect June 30th, 2021. And also, too, I talked with Councilor Quinlan, and maybe you could bring forth what you talked about. Oh, sure. Thank you. Uh, just in terms of other um, departments that we might be interested in speaking to, I actually thought the conversation we had in full council the other night in regards to the animal control 
uh, mm. officer and the, the whole position and operation was interesting. And I felt there was room to get into a lot more. So uh, I was going to propose to, to us all that, that maybe we would consider uh, asking Shayla how the animal control officer to join us to talk about the operation, uh, the staffing and the future of that, uh, especially in light of the new facility that we've approved funding for. I don't know what, what everyone else thinks about that. And I, and I also had asked Councilor Labarge if she thought that it was okay to have Shayla specifically or if it had to be Chief Casper because Shayla reports to the chief right now. Uh, but I think Councilor Labarge seemed to think it was okay to ask Shayla directly. Laura, you'll handle that, correct? I'm sorry, what, what was your question? Do you handle that to- Oh, yes. And, um, and I think if I asked for her, I'm sure the mayor's office would tell me if- um, they thought it was more appropriate for someone else to come, but um, All right. yeah, so I could definitely handle that. Well, and just to be clear, I, you know, I was talking about for June because I think May with the new finance director is going to be a pretty packed uh, event. <laughs> there are a lot of questions to be asked here. I have great concerns, not about the new construction of a building. I have concerns about the animals itself, training dogs all my life showing dogs all my life for a long, long time. Right now, even with our Australian cattle dog, right? He's gone through ambiguity right down the line. I have concerns about cameras on dogs and during the nighttime, if a dog is into troubles, respiratory problems or seizures, what is a camera gonna do and how long is it gonna take somebody? So I have a lot of questions to ask about this new facility that's gonna be structured. And I wanna know about the staffing. That's my concern here. So I think it's an excellent, excellent idea. And I have many people on my ward who are dog lovers, cat lovers right down the line. And I think how they're gonna staff it is critical here. That's it on me. So anyways, I need a final motion. Move to adjourn. But do we need to do any discussion on Councilor Quinlan's? Or I, I saw a heads nod. Idea. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic idea. I uh, wished I had thought of it. So thank you, Councilor Quinlan. Yeah. That's a good idea. We had a good talk on that. So I'm glad that we're putting that in. Uh, uh, thank you so, all. Anyways, we need one final motion. Move to adjourn. Second. Roll call, Laura. <laughs> um, Councilor Foster. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes.